Yes. Po. Yes. Po. Okay. So let me start the class because this yes, is um, exactly one hour. Yes, po. So good, good morning, everyone, and happy Wednesday. So I hope everybody is um, is is in his right mind to be with the class today. So uh, I wish to pray that thank God that everybody, almost everyone, is here. And for those who are not here, who are not feeling well, may we pray for fast recovery. And we also thank God that everybody in the family, in your family and in my family, are fine. And uh, we thank you for a bright mind that as we share ideas and knowledge in this art appreciation class, that God will bless whatever gets into our mind. And we also pray that this art appreciation class will not only give us knowledge, but will also give us the strength to be with uh, the flow of life during at this pandemic. And uh, we also thank God for everything, for the food that we eat today, for the eat, uh, food that we eat for tomorrow, for the clothes that we wear, for the house that we have, for the connect, good connectivity that we have, even for the bad connectivity that we have. We still thank God that we are reaching with each other. We're trying to reach with each other. So thank God we are here again for the uh, lectures on art appreciation this month of October. And we all say amen. Okay, so here, let me share to you the, the lecture I have prepared for everyone. So it's all about visual experience. What is visual experience? So last time we already finished, I just want to have a review of the last lesson that we have in the past few weeks. We talk about the art already, description and definition of art, the nature of art, the roles of art and the artists, the viewers, the, the media, media that we use in our art pieces, the audience role in your art. And then we also extracted, we tried to extract the meaning of some particular art and we have learned about the purpose of life. This is the most important thing. We have learned about the purpose of art in our life and in the life of other people okay so our schedule for today is we will discuss about the visual experience that we have in looking into the arts of the artist and even into the arts of the beginners okay so basically there are two parts that we're going to discuss today the language of visual arts having the elements of visual elements the principles of design the style the evaluation and criticism, and a lot of experience about art. So the objective of this lecture is to hear, at least discuss and know about visual elements, principles of design, style, evaluation, and criticism. These are the contents of the two-dimensional, which, which is the last part of our lecture. So we have the drawing, the painting, the printmaking, the camera and computer imaging, the graphic design and illustration. But I think we cannot cover this one already. This would be under the next lecture that I'm going to present. This would be for next week, but this one we will discuss everything today, okay? And the language of visual experience. So now we proceed to the la this language of visual experience. What is this visual experience? So the visual experience of art investigates how you visually experience an art. That means how your art examines or observes a particular art and how your brain processes the perception coming up with the various components of the different types of art. So basically, the, the visual art, art experience is the combination of the ability of the eye to see a particular art and the ability of the brain to interpret, to analyze, to describe, and to judge a particular art. So that is your visual experience. It doesn't mean that you say visual and it stops into the looking or observation of the eye. Okay, there should be an input of how the brain processes the things that you see. Because when you see or look at something, it doesn't just end at seeing or looking at something. You have to say something. You have to describe that thing. You have to judge. 
you have to interpret, you have to say something about that word so that your system will be able to absorb how you see that particular thing. So it's saying and thinking at the same time combined together, then that is your visual experience. Okay, so I hope that's clear. And then what are the samples of visual experience here? We encounter visual experience when the visual arts are, are forms that create works that are primarily visual in nature, such as, so we experience visual experience with art pieces made of ceramics, drawing, painting, sculpture, printmaking, design crafts, photography, video, so a lot more, even the film. So that means all the products of the art, the different fields of art, can create or make you a visual encounter or experience. So what are the three types of visual art? Well, the fine arts are a collective, a collective include seven forms of the art in fine arts. The fine visual arts are traditionally limited to three visual arts, the painting, the sculpture, and architecture. But later on, in this contemporary world, you can already have the visual experiences with the different forms of art, even in the performing art. So visual arts are those that we can see, the painting, the sculpture, and architecture. And then we have the performing arts that when the singing, the dancing, the on-stage play, and then we have the moving action, the film, and cinema. So instead of seven, a while ago we discussed it seven, seven fields of art or seven for forms of art. Now it's eight because film and cinema is added to this field of art. Okay. Now we move to the next slide. What is meant by visual language? So if there's a visual experience, there should be a visual language. So what is meant by visual language? Let me raise this one. Okay, so visual language can be defined as a system that communicates through visual elements. It is perceived by our eye and interpreted by your brain, by our brain, which receives the signal and transform into sensations, emotions, actions, and thoughts. So basically, the visual language is being created by how we look, how the eye look at a particular thing, and how the brain thinks about that particular thing and then they the the bra the 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 eye and the brain combined together will come up there goes the interpretation or judgment or analysis or description and then we create the visual language out of the perceptors or seers or viewers sensations emotions actions and thoughts it could be the artist himself or it could be the viewers themselves. Okay, so basically, we create visual lang language out of the visual experience combined by the, the seeing process of the eye and the thinking process of the brain. Okay, and it is also extracted from our emotions, sensation, actions, and thoughts. Why? Because we have uh, different uh, experiences in this world. So visual language could be different. It varies from one viewer to the next viewer it varies from one artist to the next artist because we have different sensations we have different emotions we have different actions and thoughts so there's there lies the uniqueness in every art perception so everything your perception your judgment your interpretation nothing is wrong okay when it comes to art that's the most beautiful thing about art everything is accepted everything is embraced because it is an art but your art is your lifestyle your way of life so it's not it doesn't just end as art as an art piece but it is also your way of life so if you try to absorb the real sense of art then you become embracing of everything you become uh, accept uh, you accept things into your life be it negative or positive that that make that makes you a great person Okay, so th that's a deeper uh, explanation. Then we move to the next one. So what is an example of visual language? So we have the diagram, a map, and a painting. And all of those things, the elements of arts coming from, like the shape, the color, the motion, the texture, the pattern, 
the lines and the hues, the orientation, the balance, the proportion in the products of an art, then the, that's a sample of visual language. The thing that you use when you try to interpret, those are visual language, okay? So from this statement, elements of visual, visuals, principles of designs, styles, and art evaluation or judgment that would eventually come out are the major components that would affect one's visual language experience. Okay, so that is all about visual language experience. Now we move to the next slide. After defining those visual experience, what is visual experience, what is visual language, uh, the combination of the eye the seeing by the eye and thinking by the brain combined together, supported and reinforced by your emotions and thoughts. This is a this is a visual experience. Then you come to look at an art. And then the things that you try to, to use in interpreting that combination together, that's your thought, emotions, and all of you come up with your visual language. Okay, so I hope I'm clear with that. Now we move to the elements. Elements and principles of the art are very important uh, subject to look into. Why? Because they help you in creating your art. So how do you want how do you wish to become an artist? Well, you have to undergo knowing the elements and principles of this fields of art. Okay, so I want to note, I want you to note that there are different elements and there are different principles when you try to get into the music, you get into the different fields of art. So there are elements and principles exclusive for, for dancing. There are elements and principles exclusive for the singing and for the film and for the painting, for the sculpture and architecture. But in most, most of the time, uh, these elements and principles are present in almost areas or forms of art field. Okay, so the first element would be the color. Let's, uh, let's look into the painting. But the color is not limited on painting alone because we also have uh, colors in the architecture. Archi yeah, architectural out output. We also have colors in the sculpture, sculptural structure. Okay, we also have colors in the different fields of art. In the film, we also have colors. So when we say color, it pertains, uh, there are two, three factors covering, covered by color. These are hue, value, and intensity. So the hue, the hue is the color itself. So I don't have to define so much on that. But the value is the lightness and darkness of the color on a particular painting. Okay, so how heavy green is, because in one painting, you don't paint like a plain green, but there, there's this, like from light, light, light green to the dark green to dark green, light uh, pink to the light pink, dark pink. Okay, this is the volume of the color. Intensity means the brightness and purity of the color. That means... It is much associated with where your light is coming from. When you try to paint, you, you, you have to imagine where the light is coming from so that when you combine the colors together, then you will know where to put much value, where to put, put much hue and much intensity in your painting. So when you say intensity, it talks about the brightness and purity of the color. But you have to consider or you have to associate it with the source of your light. That's why most of the painters, when they paint, they put their light at the back of their canvas so that they will know where the, the brightness and the lightness and uh, of the color are coming from. Okay, so I hope that's clear. Next one is the form. Let me define for painters and draftsmen, form is the element of art that renders a three-dimensional form in two dimensions. I'll explain that later on. In a lot of ways, it is the heart of an art art object so the form is the heart of an art object the form itself it can it can enclose a volume and includes height width and depth a cube a sphere a cylinder and a pyramid are all different forms can be found in your painting forms can also be formless abstracted and free-flowing so the form could it's not just a shape that's different so a form could be found in your painting in different uh, in different shapes or in different uh, description. 
it could be overflowing that means in an abstract there's no particular shape or there's no particular form but still that that is the form okay there's the form the abstract form or the free, free flowing style that is the form and also when you say form in a painting for example it's not it's not a 3d it's not a 2d but if you feel that it's it feels like a 2D, then there's the form. You can see some shape, you can you can feel some volume out of the face. For example, you the painter draw a, a, a face of a lady and there's the different uh the contour of the face is being manifested visually, even though it it's not protruded or something, it's not a sculpture but a painting, and you feel that it's like a 2D, that's the form. Okay, that's the form in the painting. That defines the form, the, the element of form. I'm showing you an example of form. So you look at this one. This is a painting. Okay, it's a 2D painting, and that's a form. Why? Because you look at the in reality, we can't color our face like that. But the painter is trying to show the form of the painting. And there's the shape, there is the contour. You can see the contour by uh the painter manifesting the different colors of the face so that means the face in reality is not a flat thing it has its volume it has its contour and the colors are combined together beautifully to show that the face is has a scope it's a, it's like a landscaping okay so there, there there's a scape on your face made by the artist so this the, the artist of this one is awesome it's very good at trying to come up with a 2D painting. But it's a flat thing. That's the form of this painting, a 2D, a 2D form. And now we go to the line. So we have, wait, we have the, at first we have the color, then we have the form. That's, uh, form is the second element. And then the third element would be the line. Line is very basic when it comes to painting and when it comes to drawing. Anything about the field of art, especially the visual arts okay all of this start with line especially if the, the artist is a novice or the artist is a beginner then he has to start with line like when a painter tries to paint then he has to make a sketch of the face first when this is called tour try to make a sculpture then he has to sketch first the the width the length how big uh how how tall the sculpture is the piece is how wide or what's the volume how dense is the sculpture is and how how thick okay the height the width of the the and the depth of the sculpture is being considered by this sculptor so the line is very important the element of line is very important I want to show you this one, one example, one good example in manifesting your lines in your sketches or drawing is doing hatching or crow's hatching. At first, this one, prior to having this crow's hatching, first it has, it has its hatching, like shading. Shading in one line means hatching. But when you come to uh, put or manifest some crow's lines, then that will be crow's hatching. And it is a ba basic uh, practice in doing your drawing or sketch. Okay, so you can see the volume. It creates a volume. That means it creates a 2D, the form. The hatching and close hatching creates the form. And those lines are being manis manifested in this form. Okay, so that's one important. The line is a very important element too. And then we move to the shape. Shape. Uh, here, let me define the element of art that is two-dimensional, flat, or limited to height, and with usually a shape is enclosed, okay? So even though in this painting, without this triangle, without showing this triangle figure here, the artist who is well-versed with his craft will not just uh, see a particular circular shapes or circle shapes in here. When these three circular shapes are combined together in this figure, then the artist would see a triangular shape in here. Even the viewers can see this. So the shape that we see here are not, it's not just circular or circle shapes, but we also see, also see triangular shapes. Those shapes are very important 
because it gives beauty to the painting. Okay? Next one. So that the fourth one is shade. Depends the, the element of shade. And then we have the element of space. Among the elements, the space is a little bit confusing. Why? Sometimes we just look at the space. The space that I see in on a painting could be different from the space other people see, others view, other viewers see on that particular painting. But first, let me discuss with, uh, the basic spacing here. So you look at this first figure. Okay, there's the road and there's the mountain maybe or some field. In this case, in my own pers personal perspective, I look at this man walking as my subject. So I can see his face from the street, the, the line between this man and the street or the road is the space. And the line of the road, this, this boundary between the road and this field is a space. In some cases, other viewers would see different things. For example, I am fond of human, I am fond of human forms, so I see this man as my subject. In some other cases, some people or viewers are fond of birds, so they see the birds as their subject. And what they see in here is the space between the subject, their subject, his subject, the birds, and the sky. Okay? So some people are fond of trees. So what they see in here are the trees and the space around the trees. So we see different things in a space, but the space most probably is the space between your subject as a viewer and between the next subject in that particular art. Okay, so basically it's the same. We see here a face of a lady. And then uh, some other, at first I see the, uh, the face of a lady. Why? I'm consistent. Because I love human form, so I see the face of a lady with human form. In, but in some cases, other people first see the, just the eye, or other people would see the hands, okay, uh, on the face, covered, covering the face in white color. So we have different perspective and we have different uh, space depending on how we look at this particular art object. And then this one, the last figure would be... Maybe in some cases, some people enjoy drinking or some people would love to uh, uh, drinking, having their beverages, then they would consider this as a glass or cup. But in my case, I saw the face-to-face -face figure. Because I am, as I have told you, I love human forms. So I see the man in here, I see the face of a woman in here, and I see the, the face the contour or silhouette of a man face to face, okay? So basically, we, we have different spaces when you look at a particular art, and that's the meaning of a space. Okay, then we have the element of texture. Texture, that means, uh, as the word implies, it, it has something to do with our sense of touching. You look at this one, it, as if, as if it has, it, uh, when we look at it, a particular art or painting, it looks rough or it looks smooth. So look at this one. This is a painting. But I, I could feel the roughness of this side. Why? Because of the contour of the lines. I can feel the, the, the smoothness in this side because there is no line in it. Okay? So this is what we call texture on a painting. Okay? So you can, you can feel the painting. Okay, after those uh, six important elements in the art, because this will be considered and these are the things that you need when you make your own art, now we talk about principles of design. A while ago, when we say elements, these are the material things. These are the things that we usually sense, the colors, okay, the texture, the shape, the lines, the forms that create a particular art. Now, when we talk about principles, these are your guiding steps, or these are your, your, your guide in doing your, in creating your art. So, putting all your elements together would make up your principles.
Okay, let's look at this one. The first principle would be, uh, let me define first. Let me read this one. If the elements of art are your tools, okay, the principles of art are how you put them together. So that means your guide. The principles are the, the, the way how you put all of these elements together, your tools together, and you create your style as an artist, like manipulating all of these substances together to make a beautiful principle of art, okay? And um, under these principles are rhythm, harmony, balance, contrast, movement, proportion, and variety. So basically, you cannot make an art without element and element or without a principle. They are combined together because your elements are your tools and your principles are your guide. So you, you combine your skills and knowledge in doing an art with the use of your elements and the principles of art. Now let me discuss uh, the, the principles of art, okay? So rhythm. It says here, this principle of art describes the movement of an art, of an artwork. Rhythm is created by the variety and repetition of elements in a work of art that come together to create a visual tempo or bit. So number one thing about rhythm, there's repetition. In painting, you can see the shapes is still the same. You look at the painting I'm showing you. Also, there's the, the, the letter S movement or snake movement or uh, this this shape it's repeated and putting them together they create a very beautiful art okay so there's rhythm in this painting and there's rhythm in different field of art like in music there's rhythm in music why because uh, there's the placement of sounds in time so you don't count in when doing music but you replace those counting with your beautiful sounds or voice and there's rhythm in dance. Why? Because you consider the music, the movement, and emotions. The movement, the steps that the dancers make, the music that is being used for that particular dance, and the emotions of the dancers combine together and you create a beautiful dance. There's the rhythm, okay? Rhythm is being manifested in your dance. So there's also a rhythm in poetry, like creating how many syllables we have in the first line, how many syllables you have in the second line and you make a very good rhythm like when you you create your poem i should make like five syllables in the first line and then on the second line uh, six syllables in the second line and then five syllables in the third line and six syllables and you make a very good pattern there's a repetition of pattern okay so that creates a rhythm in your poem there's also rhythm in architecture and sculpture Okay, because you have to consider the arrangement of the shapes. You have to consider the arrangement of the line. And you have to consider the arrangement of the objects that you use in your architecture and sculpture pieces. So that means there's a rhythm. If, if you make or create a very good combination of the different elements and there's repetition in that particular pattern, then there's the rhythm. Okay? So there's also a rhythm in the filmmaking because you try to create the if you have if you still remember the the the, the climax and the moment in a story so in film there's also this tension and the tension is being released okay so, so there's the climax and there's the moment there's the tension and there's the release in film it's like that so a combination of that pattern tension release tension release climax the moment climax the moment then that's the rhythm there's the rhythm in doing film that's the first principle, the rhythm. Okay, the second principle would be harmony. Let me read this one. This is achieved when the elements of an art come together in a unified way. Certain elements are repeated yet still look and feel similar. Not monotony and chaos. Harmony is that perfectly honed combination of both. So basically, harmony is the visually satisfying effect of a, combi a combining similar or related elements. Harmony in a painting or design helps bring up unity. Harmony and unity are parallel when it comes to visual arts. Okay, so it has something to do, it is associated with the combination of the colors, with the combination of the shapes and lines and forms. The combination, a very good combination of your elements together, that's your harmony. Okay, and you come up with a very united 
uh, painting a very united art uh, art piece or sculpture or architecture or a dance. Okay, so that's your harmony, principle of harmony in your art output. Then next one we have, uh, uh, these are examples of harmony. So I want to show you this one in music, there's harmony. Why? Because uh, I said a while ago, it's the combination of the different elements in music or orchestra for example there's the the singer okay and there's the group who would support the singer there's a sound from the piano there's the sound from from the um, guitar there's the sound from the violin and from other different instruments of music and then you combine all of these sounds together and you create a very beautiful sound that's the, there's the harmony also in dance i want you to look at this one okay there's the movement in there there's the balance in dancing you look at the male figure and the female figure you look at the male figure the hand is protruded in the open space and you look at the male figure the feet is protruded on the open space also okay in the open space also so that there's balance there's rest while because there's balance Basically, that is the concept. If there's balance, then there's rest. There's no chaos. Okay, so that creates a harmony in a dance. The next one would be balance. So the balance I'm talking about here in harmony would be similar, but not the same with the balance I'm trying to refer as one of the principles in art making or in the fields of art. So you look at this one. I have two different figures here, but very similar, right? So I have in balance, you have to consider the symmetrical and the asymmetrical style in doing your artwork. So basically, you look at the bottom part, this one. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about this figure. Okay, this is symmetrical art put, art, artwork. That means whatever you see in the right is also seen on the left side of the, the output of the painting. Let's consider this a painting. Okay, so that's symmetrical. There is balance. Why? Because whatever is found on the right side, it's also found on the left side. We wow. find it on the left side. And then I have the second figure, the, the upper part, the upper part artwork. So let's consider this a painting also. There's a symmetrical style. So that means there's still balance. Okay, you, you may not see what uh, what's on the right side. You may not see it on the left side, but definitely there is balance and it is a symmetrical style. Why? Because you look at the shapes, you look at the colors, and you look at the lines being used. There's repetition of the circular from left to the right, bottom and up. Bottom and top. There's repetition of the colors. Black is everywhere, red is everywhere, yellow is everywhere there's a repetition white is everywhere there's a repetition of the shapes the forms the spaces in this figure so it is balanced and it is asymmetrical so balance is also one of the principles that create a beautiful art so we move to the next one we have here contrast contrast is a fourth principle that uh, it's, it says here areas of contrast are where a viewer's eye are usually first drawn okay so it means that when you look at particular art you can see what's the exact things that are opposites artists will combine elements to stress the differences between those two elements so basically the artist would make way on how to on how to make the viewers look at the contrast of their artwork because there the principle applied to this artwork is the principle of contrast so basically, it's the opposite elements being combined. The good thing about that is when these uh, two uh, distinct elements are combined together, like black and white color in a painting, it creates a very beautiful art because the artist has his own way on how uh, to make or unite this contrast, the uh, contrasting things together or elements together, guided by the principle of contrast. Okay. Also in music, we have contrast. Why? Because we have um, 
in musical form there's a part that you create the sound there's the sound there's the low sound there's the high pitch and then there's a blank we stop for a while we rest for a while so it's not monotonous the moment it's not monotonous in music there's the there's this contrast there's this principle of contrast applied into that sound and it makes the music beautiful because it's not monotonous okay so also in architecture it is manifested how okay you look at this art this particular art you look at the back back structure but this is just one piece of architecture okay it's not separated but it seems separated because of the contrast but it makes a beautiful union why you look at this one the back part of the structure is made up of brick or cement right and then you can easily see this part made up of wood and glass and maybe rod or metal okay so it's a combination between maybe an, a traditional structure or maybe um not exactly traditional structure but an olden older structure older architecture and this one is a modern architecture architecture combined together so it's contrasting but it creates a very beautiful art because it's unique okay that that uh principle of contrast is applied on that particular architecture that makes the architecture amazing so you see how these principles guide a particular art okay we have this one the fifth would be movement so this principle of movement is very good and very much important in creating your art. Okay, so most of the viewers, especially my, for example, in my personal opinion, when I look at an art and it keeps, it looks like it moves me or even though it's not moving because it's a painting, it moves me or it, it makes me feel like oh, I'm in the water or I'm, I'm walking, I'm climbing the mountain this kind of uh, art, there's that sense of movement. There's the principle of movement applied on, the, on that particular art. And one very good art uh, artworks that manifest movement are the art of Van Gogh, okay? I have introduced Van Gogh a few days back that uh, uh, Van Gogh is a very weird art, artist, but he is very good and his paintings are very expensive. So you look at his art, this is one of his uh, favorite, this art, and it, it feels like there's something moving in it, right? So you can feel the brush going to the, this uh, direction. You, you can feel the brush going to that direction, and it looks like a water moving, or it looks like a wind moving. And you look at the sun, okay, it's, it's shining, but not so bright. And you can feel that because of the movement that is, because of the principle of movement, which guided the hands of Van Gogh in trying to come, come up with this particular art. Okay, so that would be the fifth principle. Those principles are very important, again, in creating your art. So in all areas of um, or different forms of art, there are movements. It is manifested much in dancing also. You look at this one. You see, it looks like, a, of course, this, this is a... A flat surface so there's no movement in reality but in in this case there's movement you can see the hands you can see the 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 legs are being stretched this way you can see the heads moving up and down and you can see the movements everywhere so there's the sense of movement there's the principle of them being being employed in this art field in this dance and also in architecture because it maybe some of you will think that architecture has no movement because it's structured and it's cemented it is not moving no there's also a movement in sculpture and architecture especially when it comes you look at this one when it comes to the shape and it comes to the the, the form that it's uh, being um, manifested so it's a circular structure going up spherical you can feel the movement there's movement in this architecture. That's the principle of movement. Why did the, the sculpt, uh, the architect, why was the architect able to create this? Because of that principle of movement that guided his imagination and creativity to come up with this kind of architecture. Okay, so it guided 
the artist or the architect. And then we have also movement in the film. You look at this one, this one, this figure. Okay, so you look at the protagonist, the hero in the film, moving from one place to the next. You know, he's walking and there's movement. Okay, and there's one, there's a person here standing. Maybe the, this is the antagonist uh, waiting for this hero to, to, to pass by. And maybe later on he would kill him. But even though he's just standing there watching the hero moving, there's also a movement in here. Even though he's stable, he's not moving at all. But in this case, there's movement while he's standing. Okay? This is standing and this is a film. And there's movement in here. Okay? And even though this, this scenery at the back, even though it's not moving in this case, there's movement in it. Those are trees. And trees wave uh, with, the use, with the help of the wind. So there's movement. So this is how the principle of movement manifested in the film and cinema. Okay? So sculptures are not awesome, are not also moving things. But look at this architecture. Okay? There's the wave. There's the movement in the wave. Like when you try to paint an ocean, there's a movement in the ocean. Especially when the brass strokes are be being manifested. When the, the waves are manifested by the brass strokes of the artist. This one, the waves of the water is being manifested in this sculpture very well. So it, it seems that the artist is trying to, 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 has tried to, has conveyed his message. This, this is a wave of the water. Okay, so there's the movement in this sculpture. And then the sixth one, we have the pattern. The principle of pattern is of huge help to creating also your output your art piece okay so you look at this one there's repetition there's a pattern there's a shape there's a form it's circular there's the drop uh, eye drop figure that is being used along the way from the from the inner part of the output or art piece down to the outer part of the art piece so there's repetition of the eye drop figure. There's repetition of the uh, circular pattern. So there's the pattern. That's the principle of pattern applied on your art piece. And then there's also the pattern manifested in this architecture. So you see your pattern is also everywhere. Like in your architecture, for example, you have here, there's the flying, flying uh, style of the style structure and then there's there's this one the head and then the flying and then the head and then the flying maybe and then the head okay so this pattern is also uh, as i have said is a very good principle to follow when you create your art piece and it's manifested in this architecture okay um, so i uh, this is the seventh part because we have eight we have eight uh principles of elements so this is the seventh principle the proportion proportion is not always manifested because we are now living in a modern world so most of the the architecture that we see right now are are influenced by the modern modern thinking of the people at present because in the in, in the ancient times or in the past uh proportion is very much manifested in the school sculptures or architecture of the european architects or artists okay so especially the columns the buildings they have the pillars okay that that has its one lamp from front to back so these are uh the uh, the proportion that we have and it is the relationship of uh between the height the width and the depth so usually they make equal proportion they make just one similar proportion uh, with their architecture but at this point in time proportion uh, is a bit variety like in an architecture you they don't just create uh, the same length of the columns in one building but uh, with our modern architecture they, they they have they have a combination of almost every style that we see in architecture that's the modern time this is a little bit of the ancient time or old olden time 
Okay, there's also proportion in this painting. Why? Uh, when we talk about the when we talk about the principle of proportion, it means here there's a balance. There's a symmetrical balance. Why? Because there are a lot of people here, and there's also a lot of people in here. There are movements in the people in here, walking people, and there are also walking people in here. And there's the structure here, similar to the structure there. And you look at the clouds. Okay, so there's proportion applied in this painting there are trees here and there are also trees here it's balanced symmetrically balanced with a proportion uh, with the principle of proportion being applied okay and then we have here a lady dancing when you see a sculpture like this it doesn't uh, it doesn't mean that it doesn't have a proportion proportion is also employed the principle of proportion is also employed in this culture why because you will have to think that maybe the artist or the sculptor is in front of the sculpture doing thing like imagining he is here at the bottom part of the sculpture making the thing so that means the upper part is a bit farther when you manifest it visually it's like a little bit far from the because he is here down at the bottom so that means the 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 farther the object from the artist from the artist that means the smaller the object becomes okay so this is manifested the proportion the right proportion is manifested in this sculpture of a, the lady dancing and the last one the eighth one would be the variety okay this is what i'm trying to tell that the variety there's the contrast okay it, you can you can separate all in one in one canvas you can separate all of these things together like this one uh, this part is more on commercialism ads like making brochures okay this one is a little bit of a countryside painting maybe because there are a lot of trees and this one would be a bit of uh, urban or maybe old church or big houses or houses in the villages so a little bit modern style combined together so this means a variety the principle of variety is employed different shapes different colors contrasting colors okay different themes like this could be in the genre of uh, now it's modern this could be in the rural area this could be under urban area so a lot of distinctions a lot of diversity that are combined together that still makes a very beautiful and amazing art so those are the principles that you need in trying to come up with your arts your elements okay the colors the lines the shapes the forms the texture and then you have your elements guided by your element elements so you have this um the pattern you have the the proportion you have the um, variety the eight the eight principles are being employed to your art that makes a very wonderful art okay so we manifest variety in dancing like look at this one there's the figure of a group dancing but they have different steps but still it looks amazing and very nice maybe maybe in the actual it will still look very nice because even though they make one sound they they use just one sound then they would create different steps okay there's the principle of variety there's the contrast but still they come up with a beautiful dance and also this one this one is a painting so the the the, the orange the green and the blue uh they are making this pieces are making a cubism style and these small ones are not really in cubism but it's more on illustrative object okay but combined together they have different styles they are coming from different styles and different themes but when combined together they still create a very beautiful art that that in this case the principle of variety is employed in this painting so still it's beautiful also in, in architecture the principle of variety is being manifested why wow, look at this one this is just one one piece of architecture okay but look at this one there's this big uh rectangular shape here and if it's contrasting it was this and this is also this this village is also part of everything of this one there's the contrast but there's the beauty because the the principle of variety is being employed they apply 
the principle of variety. Also in the next architecture, this one, uh, the theme is Bahay Kubo. You look at the shape, it's triangle. So it's traditional in the shape or form, but the material, it's made of glass. There are metals, there are cement, so it's a little bit modern, okay? But the shape is a little traditional. So a combination of different uh, different principles and elements into this one piece of architecture, variety is employed. And it created a very beautiful masterpiece of architecture, okay? So this is what I mean. So when you combine your elements and guided by your principles in art together, you create a very beautiful and amazing art. And now, not really thank you yet. Um, let me escape. Okay. So that would be, the, that covers the first lecture for October. And I want you to rest your mind. I will be posting everything on our GC. And I have posted everything already in our illness, so I want you to, to take a look at that. I will find time, for those who were not able to attend my class today, I will find time to send you the, the recorded one because I am recording. I am recording right now. So I hope everyone is okay. And I want to stop uh, sharing my PowerPoint because I want to see everybody's beautiful face now. So let me see. How can I get out from this? Um, yeah. Okay. Hello? Are you still with me? Yes, po, ma'am. Okay. Yes, po, ma'am. Maliwanag ba ang aking paliwanag? <laughs> Tama ba yun? Maliwanag yes, ba ang aking paliwanag? Yes, I hope my explanation is clear. It's better to use mm -hmm. English because in Tagalog, ang paliwanag ay pagpapaliwanag. See? But in, in English, is my explanation clear? You see, you, you use different two different terms. Okay, well, anyway, uh, yes, let's stop recording. So I hope everyone is, uh, everybody understood my explanation. And the second part would be on two-dimensional uh, arts okay so that would be a first lecture now i will also be sending you later on the next task and i think it's already posted in our our elms okay let's stop recording for now